farm, Diana, how do you get rid of pests? Um, we use a couple different methods um, depending on what it is. Um, like I was telling the gal that was here earlier, if you turn and you look and you see, we have our remay that's covered over some of our cucumbers. So we do hoops and then we take the cattle wire and we bend it so it makes a nice little hoop house. Mm -hmm. And we take the seedling and we wet it and then we dust it with diatomaceous earth and we put it in the ground and we cover it with the remay and we don't open it up for about three or four weeks. And what is, um, what is remay? Remay is the white covering that protects it um, from any kind of plants, um, any really, really harsh weather, like if we were to get hail or something, which we can get at this time of the year, but particularly, you know, the pests that we don't want in there. The and caterpillars and the, bugs. The squash bugs are the okay. main predators for any type of um, plant, like cucumbers, your cantaloupes, your watermelons, any of your viney plants. And so once the plants get to a certain point, they're strong enough you know, and already far enough into their season that they're fruiting already, that by the time, if we do get squash bugs, um, you know, they're able to sustain it. And then we continue to dust them with the diatomaceous earth, oh, okay. um, which is just the really small, tiny, tiny shells that come from the ocean mm -hmm. um, that actually will cake on them. So it will actually cut them um, and or they're busy cleaning themselves so they ingest it and it clogs up their digestive system. And when they're busy cleaning themselves, they're not reproducing either. So oh. there's a couple different ways that diatomaceous earth works on that. Um, and that's the main thing that we use here. Sometimes I'll use um, different types of clays mm -hmm. um, because it acts in the same manner. You know, it will collect on the predator bug. And then when they clean themselves, it ingests and then it clogs things up. And again, they're not reproducing. So how, how is it that people can consume diatomaceous earth to help their immune systems, but bugs can't? Um, well, the size, I mean, we're huge compared to, you know, most of the predator bugs. Okay. Um, and our skin is very different than a predator bug. You know, so the diatomaceous earth is almost like a knife, you know, and we'll cut them open. Mm -hmm. You know, but as humans, it doesn't do that because of the way our tissue is made up of. It's much more resilient and stronger Whoa. than theirs. Okay. So we can consume it, you know, orally to mm -hmm. get rid of parasites. Yeah, that's um, what know. I've heard of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it works great. I feed that to my cats. Oh. Um, you know, about every two months, I mm -hmm. give them diatomaceous earth for 21 days. Oh. And it okay. gets rid of any worms or parasites, you know, that they have. Wow. Um, it's a great way, you know, of naturally, you know, deworming your animal. Um, we have our neighbors that have horses up the hill. She uses diatomaceous earth for her horses instead of using regular worming. Wow. You know, Excellent. Um, yeah, because some of those warming chemical uh, drugs can be hard. quite harsh. Super yeah, very, very harsh. Yeah. And then we also dust the chickens with it. The chickens get a mite that's very similar to a flea. Um, and so they're just, you know, at certain times of the year, really, really bad. And, and it's just annoying. They constantly want to scratch. So we take one day and we let the chickens come out of the, the house and we pick one up and we shut the door and we put them in a bucket and just cover them in diatomaceous earth and let them run off. Ah. You know, and we also use diatomaceous earth in our nesting boxes and also in the sawdust in the house. Um, and if I see the girls dusting anywhere, because they love to get in the dirt and just throw it all over them, because it helps with the mites also, I'll take a, a, a big cup of diatomaceous earth and throw in that area so that, you know, they can get it when they do their normal dustings. Wow, so, that makes it easy then. It is. Wow. So we use, we don't use hardly any, um, you know, what people would classify as organic chemical sprays at all because you can do a lot of it naturally, just especially on the small scale that we're doing things. Mm -hmm. You know, if we were a really big production farm, we would probably have to do things a little bit differently. Yeah. But I've found that we don't have to use a whole lot, you know, just by changing our practice a little bit and the way that we care for the plants, um, you know, gives them the ability to naturally resist things with a little bit of support from us. So just to look at the big picture, like I've heard that Spain feeds 70% of their population with small organic farms. What would it take for America to do some sort of transformation like that and have more small organic farms. How many families could you feed on a small organic farm like yourself? You could feed your family in a postage size garden. Mm -hmm. um, the way that we plant here, um, you know, part of our practice is we do companion planting. 
Um, along with that, companion planting allows us to plant really compactly when you know what plants grow really well together. It's just like having a best friend beside you. Yeah. You know, it's the same way in the plant world. So we can plant and, you know, nature in itself wants to reforest. So if you have somebody that comes in and logs an area, you know, within three months it's grown all back up again. Well, that's what your garden will want to do. So if you plant to cover the earth um, with companion plants and you don't have earth that shows, it won't want to grow weeds a lot of times. Um, and so you can do the companion planting um, and get a humongous harvest in a really, really small plot. And so how many families do you think you could feed on this size plot? At least 25 weekly. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that would be so vegetables if, every day. So if each small town had several, I mean, you know, I mean, we're talking small towns, but if mm -hmm. each small town had many organic farms or several organic farms, there could be CSAs that would, would feed them locally. Mm -hmm. And even have community plots. I mean, that's a, yeah. a, a huge thing that, you know, I would be a proponent of in an area where people, you know, feel they don't have the ability to do farming. Um, you know, if somebody, you know, were to donate an area that's not being used, um, you could turn just a small area into a community garden that everybody participates in and then gets har a harvest once a week, yeah. um, you know, to use as, you know, part of their supplement to what they, you know, bring into their household for their food. Yeah. Lancaster County has the largest amount of organic farms. <gasps> oh, I'm so glad we stopped here. It's pretty Perfect. amazing. Um, you know, we have, because of the Amish, even though a lot of Amish aren't organic, um, interestingly enough, um, we still have the largest amount of farms in any county in Pennsylvania. Wow. Yeah, it's really, really an amazing thing. Um, we have the neighbors down the street that are doing what I call a new age but old practice with their farming. Um, they've made this huge steam generator that looks like a caboose or part of a train that's actually a huge steam boiler that they, um, I think they use peach seeds or apricot seeds to fuel it with this year. And the boiler heats up the water and um, they're okay. Okay. They'll be fine. Um, and they have a huge stainless steel container that fits down on the ground and mm -hmm. the steam goes into the ground and um, actually kills all of the weed seeds so that they don't have to um, weed that area mm -hmm. hardly at all. Really? And so they need to use no pesticides or herbicides, usually on that area because the plants are a lot stronger, um, you know, mainly from a herbicide, you know, perspective of getting rid of weeds. Um, mm. But they found that the, the pests that want to come in aren't as prevalent as, um, you know, what they were in years past for them. But it saves, I mean, they can spend their time and energy in other places in their farm you know, because they've taken that little bit of time at the beginning of the season um, and not have to use harsh chemicals or um, the ground cover that keeps the weeds down. Wow, fascinating. It's pretty amazing to see, too. We go down every year when they do it. Wow. Yeah, like their one brother grows two acres of carrots. Carrots are horrible to grow, you know, because they take so long to germinate and come up through. You always have so many weeds, and then when you go to pull the weeds out, you end up pulling your carrots out. Oh. Um, so that's why he figured out the system because of what he grows organically. Oh. You know, over the winter they built that humongous steam generator and they have it on wheels and they pull it with their horses, you know, it gets pulled, you know, and they're within about a five mile radius of each other, you know, so they share in their farms and then this past year they built another one because they're now starting to go to other organic farms that aren't Amish. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. What a great community. You must feel really great to be connected to, I, connected to such a community. I can't imagine living anywhere else in the United States. We have a restaurant in town. It's the J.J. Jeffries restaurant. And these were two chefs that were in Cal out in Colorado. And they wanted to open up their own restaurants. And so they wanted to find an area in the United States where they could source all of their food locally. And that's what they do here in Lancaster County. They chose <gasps> Lancaster County. Wow. And the food that they serve is just phenomenal. Absolutely. Phenomenal. Oh, boy, we might have to stop over. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, Where is it's it? It's amazing. It's in town. It's at the Arts 
Hotel. Arts if Hotel? Do, Arts Hotel, if you do a Google. Okay, mm-hmm. all right, great. Well, yeah. if not now, then maybe on our, our trip on the way you back. You should call them and set something up because I'm sure okay. they would love to talk to you guys. Oh, that would be great. We would yeah. we would uh, feature them on Moms Across America for sure. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this through the camera, but the fireflies are coming out now. The turkeys are getting a little rambunctious. They're flapping around. And it's lit lighting up the night here with the fireflies. We're having a beautiful, beautiful experience. The boys are saying, Mommy, we want to live on a farm. This is really great. Yeah. Thank you for sharing with us. We're going to get more later. Yeah.